Hi, everyone. Welcome to Module 6. This module, as you know, is about the implement, implementation of instruction for English learners and dual language learners. And in this PowerPoint, we'll look at some strategies for scaffolding instruction when you're teaching within a scripted lesson plan or a scripted curriculum. And as you probably know, teachers definitely have varying degrees of autonomy when they're developing lessons. However, even when you're required to use a specific curriculum or even a scripted curriculum, there are some possibilities for scaffolding instruction to meet the needs of your English learners and dual language learners. And so just to make sure we're all on the same page, um, we'll talk about what, is, what, what, what we mean by a scripted curriculum. And here we're defining it, um, this is taken from the Glossary of Education Reform. And their definition is that a scripted curriculum is the standardized packaged curriculum that requires teachers to follow a sequence of prepared lessons and read aloud from a teaching script in class. And although we definitely recognize that professional autonomy is somewhat limited by such a curriculum, the rationale behind it is that teaching quality can either be improved or maintained when teachers are expected to follow a type of instructional script. And so when you're working, if you find yourself working with this type of curriculum, um, and when you're scaffolding instructions for English learners and dual language learners, here are some things to consider. We have four considerations. Um, the first is what do students need to be able to meet the objectives and complete the tasks that are laid out in the lesson. How can you then support students' language development and help them as they acquire new vocabulary? How can you take the lesson and adapt it, adapt the components or the tasks to, to meet the needs of your students who are, who are going to be at different proficiency levels in English. And finally, how can you best group students to support their learning? And I'm going to show you some examples of you know, ways to, to work with these considerations and to build in some strategies around them. So what we'll do is um, we're going to provide guidance on how to scaffold a lesson from the McGruffey Press first grade SE phonics and reading curriculum. Um, this system provides materials to public schools, private schools, and also homeschool programs. The McGruffey Press offers different kinds of learning products, including grade-specific materials. And right now, we'll look at a first grade phonics and reading lesson and show you lots of examples of how you can scaffold this lesson that's part of a scripted curriculum. So we're going to look at lesson 114. And for you to have a clear understanding of the lesson that we're scaffolding, um, I encourage you to download a copy of the text and lesson 114 from the Module 6 discussion board. You might, might want to pause this presentation for a moment and make sure you have the, the um, text and the lesson downloaded. And so for purposes of this presentation, we're describing ways of scaffolding the activities that align to objectives 1, 2, and 4. So you see them listed here. So objective one is students will read and answer questions about the story. Uh, objective two is students write contractions with the word will. And so, uh, objective four is students will write a story. And so this instruction is based on based around a text or a story called The Moose's Tooth. Um, and you can see a sample of it here. And I will show it to you again one more time during the presentation. So the first um, set of directions that align with objective one is that um, the first lesson tasks ask students to look at the word list for the story, which is in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. You see probably around 100 or so words listed. And then they have to find certain words and then answer comprehension questions in a workbook. So think about why this task might be difficult for English learners or dual language learners. Um, there are you know, definitely lots of ways. Look through these questions. The, the students have to find words that rhyme with boom, find the words that have two O's and end with TH. Which one has a voiced TH sound? Um, the, and as you probably know, the, the TH sound is definitely um, it, not in all languages. It's very, you know, sometimes very specific to, to English. So students who come from different languages, first of all, they might not know what a voiced TH sound means, and they might not be able to recognize it uh, in English. So just think of ways that this, these uh, tasks might be difficult for English learners. And so one of the most important ways to scaffold this activity is to give students opportunities to practice new vocabulary. So as they're looking for words that rhyme, we want to make sure they understand and they know what words they're looking at and to search out rhyming words. 
And they also have to find a word that makes you feel sad. Well, they'll need to know the meaning of, of gloom, for example, to, to know that word means sad. So you know, we'll really focus on some vocabulary here. And so in scaffolding this activity, some options for L's might be completing this task, listening to recorded instructions or to instructions in their, in their home language to the extent possible. They can uh, complete the task working in pairs or small groups, possibly you know, grouping them up based on their reading level and language proficiency and home language to be able to complete a scaffolded version of this task. Or they could also um, sort some rhyming words, so completing an alternate type of activity. Or they could match new vocabulary words with a picture of the words so they actually understand the vocabulary that's included on this list. Um, and part of the second objective, the directions for the teacher are, this is around the contractions. So the teacher writes pairs of words and have students tell them or write the contractions. For example, is not, did not, it is, et cetera. And then students have to make up the contraction and then tell which letters were left out, what was put in their place. And then, so these are some type of contraction work that they're supposed to be doing as part of the scripted curriculum. So think, you know, again, think about why this task might be especially challenging for L's and DLL's. So some activity ideas for this objective in the lesson is to first, in a large group, review exactly what is it that, what, what are contractions, and identify some contractions taken from the story so they have some context around the contractions and describe what they mean and give them some other opportunities to practice, practice saying the contractions within the context um, and within a familiar context, first of all. They can describe what they're going to do this weekend. I'm going to you know, go, go to the park. Or they could also describe themselves and others using contractions. I'm tall. He's, he's wearing glasses, for example. And uh, some more ideas for practicing contractions in a scaffolded environment for L's and DLL's could be to group students according, according to their knowledge of contractions and have them give them some different activity choices. This could be maybe in centers, for example. So they can match contractions with whole phrases, answer, um, ask and answer questions using contractions. They could write some responses to questions using contractions or do a short skit with some contractions. So really giving them some choices and, and within their comfort level. And the fourth, uh, the fourth objective is that students now take the story, the moose's tooth, and they write their own story. Well, first they retell the story, and then they write their own story based on the moose's tooth. So you know, looking at these directions, think about what might be difficult or especially challenging for English learners and dual language learners. And some of your non-ELs or DLLs might find this task a little challenging without support, too. Kids who just might not have academic language to begin with to be able to complete the task. And I look at the questions in the bottom paragraph of the screen, and I see that these are pretty grammatically complex. What might he do to make sure the mountain lion didn't eat him? Um, what kind of tools would Dr. Babu need? So this kind of conditional, the would and the might, are it's a difficult construct sometimes for L's and DLL's. And here again is our story that they have to retell first. And so it would be good to give the EL's and DLL's some scaffolding. Even though this is a scripted curriculum, there is some leeway in, in, in what you can do to support your, your students so they can actually take part in these tasks. So you could give um, your ELs and DLLs a word wall with key vocabulary and pictures, give them some sentence frames to re support their retelling of the story, give them some images from the story that would go along with their retelling, and you could have them retell, you know, using these scaffolds, retell first in pairs and then as a whole group instead of kind of putting them on the spot and making them retell in front of a whole group. And so with the next part of this uh, lesson objective, students have to write their own story. So to support students at different levels of English proficiency, think about these options. So you could model the activity for them first as a whole class. So give them a model story, help them brainstorm it, and then also maybe give them a checklist of what, what are the elements of a good story, a beginning, an end, a problem, a resolution. You could give them a list of other animals that might come to Dr. Baboon and problems they might have. You could also give them a graphic organizer to help them organize and, and jot down their ideas. So here's an example of a graphic organizer. It could be used to help students write their own story. 
And depending on students' levels and abilities, you could also brainstorm other animals who might come to visit Dr. Baboon and the types of problems they may have. And another idea are some sentence frames um, to help them write their own story. You know, you'd fill in some of these blanks, you know, the name of the animal visit to Dr. Baboon, and just giving them a little bit of structure to, to write their own story and some kind of transition words, and then and finally, to get them used to using these. And another, some other ideas for students to write their own uh, story is they could write in their first language or their home language. And this would be specifically for beginner skills that also have home language literacy skills. And this you know, draws back on what we spoke about in our first module about knowing your students and knowing their families. So you, you really have to know to what degree your students have home language literacy skills. And an, another type of scaffold uh, for this activity would be that students can draw and label items in a picture at students at a beginning level of proficiency, maybe kids who aren't quite ready for that graphic organizer yet to, to get them there and to keep them on task and on topic. So in summary, even if you are given a scripted curriculum, there are definitely opportunities to scaffold instruction for L's and, and DLL's. So there are some considerations we mentioned about scaffolding instruction. You have to think about students' language proficiency and their level of content knowledge and also their literacy level in their home language. And you have to think about the kinds of support each student will need to meet the learning objectives that are set out and described in the lesson. And finally, there are a variety of scaffolds that you can use to support EL and DLL student achievement. Some things we looked at in this module, in this PowerPoint, were modeling graphic organizers, sentence stems, sentence frames. We talked about word walls and glossaries, providing graphics or images, and adapting the tasks based on the student's level. So that concludes this PowerPoint about how you can scaffold instruction for students when you're using a scripted curriculum. So I hope you found these strategies helpful for your English learners and dual language learners. Thank you.